Evening, peeps. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, let's do this. Let's talk Ame Khan versus Kel Brook. Before we do that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget as well to like and share the vids. Finally, finally, Ame Khan versus Kel Brook has been announced. The fight will take place February 19th in Manchester. Um, my first thoughts were better late than never. All right, I mean, I could have had many other thoughts, trust me. But my first thoughts were, you know what, better late than never. Yes, I think I've gone over this time and time again. The fight should have happened five, six, seven years ago. But I'd rather it happen than not happen. I mean, because look, there are many fights in the history of boxing that we always say, oh, what would happen if that person fought that person? Um, sometimes not at their peak, just if they ever fought. Um, like Ricky Hatton Jr. Witter is one that always springs to mind. Like that should have happened. Uh, Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bow should have happened. Um, at least this will happen. I mean, are the fighters both past their prime? Yes, way past their prime. But at least the fight is going to happen. Um, and I will tune in. Everyone that is digging the fight out, and I, and I get it. Obviously, look, I get it. I'm going to dig it out now. We'll still tune in because there is some intrigue there. We've grown up watching these two fight. And we've seen time and time again rumors the fight was going to happen and not happen. Um, and we've been disappointed about it. We've seen both take weird paths. One fought Golovkin and got smashed. One fought Canelo and got smashed. And we're there thinking, just fight each other. You know, so their careers have gone in weird places and neither have anywhere to go that will generate them the kind of money they're going to make fighting each other. So it's a case of they kind of have to do it. Amir Khan could still probably take fights in the Middle East and make some good money. I think we saw that when he fought Billy Dibb. Kelbrook can't fight anyone and make the kind of money he's going to make fighting Amir Khan. It just can't happen. So Kelbrook has been desperate for this fight for a number of reasons. Number one, Amir Khan's always been the bigger name when it comes to British and world boxing. Um, it makes big, big money for Kelbrook as well. And he just doesn't like him. He genuinely doesn't like him. This isn't no WWE gimmicky stuff. He does not like Amir Khan at all. And Amir Khan... I don't know if he has the same dislike for Kel that Kel has for him, but he certainly doesn't like Kel either. So, I mean, it is genuine animosity. A lot of people, when they've done the nose-to-nose -nose and little push, were like, oh, here we go, trying to sell the fight. No, 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 they're not. They just don't like each other. They don't like each other at all. Uh, the fight will be at 149 pounds. I was intrigued as to what weight it would be. I thought it might be around 152. Um, 149 pounds doesn't really help Kel, if I'm honest with you. I mean, he kills himself to make 147, trust me. I know people that have been around Kel and talk about the weight cut and yes, he might look like an Adonis, right? He looks fantastic on the scales at 147, but there's nothing in there. I mean, again, you know my term, Ferrari no engine. It's like a Ferrari no engine. So I don't know if the extra two pounds are gonna help Kel too much, I don't. Um, Amir Khan looks like he's already losing weight. Amir Khan looked really trim in the suit today, whereas Kel, you can see the double chin I mean, he's going to struggle to make 149 pounds. He really is. But look, the fight's happening. It's happening on pay-per-view. Um, it was only ever going to happen on pay-per-view. I don't know why people are upset about that. I mean, actually, I take that back. I know why people are upset about it. I mean, you don't want to pay 20, 25 quid for Amir Khan, pay, Amir Khan, Kel Brook when it's five or six years past its sell-by date. But that's the only way these two are going to get in the ring. Um, like, Sky's budget to put on a fight card could never, ever pay for Amir Khan versus Kel Brook on a normal Saturday night. I don't know if you guys understand how that works, but Sky will give Boxer a budget. So I'm, I don't know how much, but for example, they could give Boxer a budget to do a Saturday night event, which is about half a million. That pays for everything. That pays for everything on the, the fight card, everything that goes on behind the scenes. Half a million wouldn't get Amir Khan out of bed. So you have to chuck it on pay-per-view and hope that the pay-per-view buys pay for both guys. That's, that's how it is. And it, it probably will. Um, I think this will do good numbers. I really do. It's not going to do anything like the numbers it would have done four or five years ago, where I think it could have gone anywhere between half a million to a million buyers. I really believe that. Sold out Wembley Stadium, the lot. It ain't going to do that, but it will still do good numbers. Some people have said things like, oh, this is our, or, or made the comparison to, this is our Floyd Pac-Man. No, it's not. It, I, I know what you mean, maybe in terms of like how long it's taken the fight to make, but that's where the comparisons stop. Floyd was pound for pound number one when he fought Manny Pacquiao. Floyd still had a very good career after Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao still had a very good career after Floyd. Manny Pacquiao, I don't think people remember, beat up Timothy Bradley after fighting Floyd. So 
I mean, like, and not only that, but that broke the pay-per-view box office record. Like, tickets sold out just like that. This don't do anything like that. So, so I think that's where the comparison stop. I get what you're trying to say in terms of the length of time the fight has had. Um, in terms, sorry, the length of time it's taken to make the fight, but that's that's where the comparison stop. I will go back to, and look, you've heard me say this again, but I will go back to the fact that this fight should have happened six years ago, five years ago, when um, Kel beat, beat Sean Porter to become IBF uh, welterweight champion and Ame Khan um, had those really good wins against Colazo and Devin Alexander. It was there, it was ready right then. Right then it should have happened and it didn't. And look, I don't know if I blame Ame Khan because Ame Khan, if you look back at it, around that time was so close to getting the Floyd fight. Like it was so close. It was between him and Maidana. There were some people, crazy people, thinking Ame Khan could beat Floyd. Would never have happened, but he was that close. So you can't blame him for wanting to, sorry, not wanting to fight Kel when he's chasing at the time Floyd and Pacquiao. And he was close to getting at least one of those fights. Kel, on the other hand, went and fought the likes of Frankie Gavin and Beezer and what was it? What was it? Jojo Dan or whatever the guy's name was. So Amir Khan's career was going like that. Kel's was just stagnating. So I, I don't blame Amir for not wanting to take the fight then. I really don't. I blame Amir for not wanting to take the fight three years ago when he signed to Matchroom. Remember he signed to Matchroom and done that press conference and I'm only here for one reason and that's to fight Kel. All that talk. That's where I kind of like, come on Amir, man. And he never really wanted to fight then. In, in, in theory, he kind of used Eddie Hearn. And he, he done well, right? Amir's a good businessman. The fight should have happened then. Even though it was a bit, it was done kind of then. I mean, because Kel had been bashed up by Golovkin, Amir had been beaten by Canada, but you could still sell it somehow. Didn't happen. And then again, they both went their separate ways and got bashed up by middleweights. That's what happened, right? And now here we are, six years late. I mean, they're, they're showing all the behind the scenes stuff of when the fight should have happened and both of them look a lot lighter. Especially that one where they're in... Uh, the ringside studios and there's Johnny Nelson and Adam Smith and they're separated by Audley Harrison. Look at them, both look fresh, ready to go and it would have been a great British dust-up, it really would have, but <sighs> shit happens, right? I mean, again, I mean, I don't know how much Amir Khan would have got paid then to fight Kel. Five million? I don't know. I mean, he might not be far, I mean, it won't be five million, but he might get around two? I don't know. I'd love to know what the figures are. He might get around two million to fight Kel Brook. Kel will get a bit less because Amir Khan's the bigger name here. But um, he's still going to get good money. He's still going to get good money. And what's even more crazy is, um, if you ask me, if they were to have fought five years ago, a hundred times out of a hundred, I'm not exaggerating, I would have said Kel's going to win. hundred times, too big, too strong, everything, everything. And Kel's not a slouch either with his feet or his hands. And even though Amir Khan was good back then, I thought Kel would have caught up with him and, and knocked him out. Now, with the weight cut, with Amir Khan looking pretty good at the press conference and Kel looking a bit, you know, a bit pudgy, I, I was going to say 50-50. I think if I had a couple of quid spare, which I don't, I, I would put on Amir Khan. And that, that angers me. It really does anger me because Amir Khan might get the Kel Brook W on his resume and... He doesn't deserve it because Kel would have bashed him up back in the day. But that's just how boxing works. You know, the fight's really past its sell-by date when they're both arguing about who had the better loss to Terence Crawford at the press conference. They're both arguing about a loss to T-Bud. And I'm like, oh, it's got that bad. It really has. But look, credit to Sky for putting it on. Um, you know, it's crazy. Khan, sorry, Khan. Kel was with Eddie for so long, right, after he left Frank Warren. Like, loyal to Eddie or Eddie Law to him, whichever way you want to put it. And he's got two fights that he's kind of chased after he's left Eddie. How strange. Like the, the Terence Crawford one, he's been asking for that for a while, and now the Amir Khan one. So two big fights have been made without Eddie Hearn, which I find strange because you think if anyone could have made those fights, it was Eddie. And he's been able to make them and make good money from both of them without Eddie. Strange how that works. But um, look, I will tune in. I will watch it, hopefully... I'll be able to get some tickets to go to it because I, I, I can't wait. Um, I guess I guess Amir has got home advantage. You know, Manchester's a lot closer to Bolton than Sheffield is, but um, it will be a crazy atmosphere. Say what we want about the fight being done. The noise that both fan bases will generate, and 
I'm mean, telling you now, once Kel, like, I'm talking like this now, but once Kel comes out with the All of the Lights song, that Kanye West Rihanna song, I'm going to lose my shit because I'm a big Kel Brook fan, but I just think this is um, 149 pounds doesn't help him and he's nowhere near what he was, is he? Nowhere near. But look, I'm happy that they both make some money, some pension money, because I'm guessing this will be the final fight for both, regardless of who wins. And um, I guess the good thing is that both have deteriorated at the same rate. That's, that's, I guess, the good thing. I just think that Kel's deterioration has dropped drastically, where Amir Khan, even if you go and watch the, the Terence Crawford fight, for a few rounds, Amir Khan is still, and the Canelo fight, his hand speed is still there, his foot speed's still there. He just slows down now when he gets hit very quickly. Um, so look, it's happening. I'm gonna watch it. Everyone saying they're not going to watch it is lying. Everyone saying they're not going to... You know, I'm about to say everyone saying they're not going to pay for it is lying, but no, I think a lot of people will illegally stream this. I think the illegal streams could break records. I really do, because I don't think people are going to win or wanting to pay for this on pay-per-view. But look, it's happening, and I can't wait for it. Let's quickly see if there's any news to talk about before we pack up and go. Uh, all the stuff here about... Um, Ryan Garcia aims for shot at Nudie Crown lightweight champ George Cambosos for ring return on Behave. You think you're going to get that? You've been out of the ring since Luke Campbell. You think you're going to come back in to a, a unified title fight? <laughs> why didn't you? Why didn't you? Why weren't you saying that about Tiafimo? Why weren't you saying my first fight back? Give me Tiafimo, but now give me Cambosos. Everyone wants Cambosos now. Jesus, um, Tiafimo Lopez Senior. Uh, we don't need the rematch. My mistake was leaving my son at one thirty-five for so long. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean. Like, should have gone up, right? Should have gone up. Again, it's, it's called weight cheating when you use it at an advantage. Again, you come in at 135, but knowing that you're going to balloon up to around 150. So, you, you know, you can be the bigger guy on the day, but it, it takes too much out of you making the 135. So it doesn't work. That has detrimental effects to what you're trying to do. So, yeah. Um, Alicia um, Baumgardner, almost one of the superstars of, of boxing right now. Her little feud with uh, Michaela Mai looks like it could turn into a really good fight. Uh, the doubters really fueled me. I definitely want to fight Choi next. Yeah, she said she wants to fight Choi. So then if she does fight Mayer, it's an undisputed in America. She can beat Choi. I think that's what she... She's more confident of beating Choi than Mayer. I think, I think uh, Terry Harper would have beat Choi as well. Um, Hearn still wants or still hopes Fury versus White will come off in early 2022. Doesn't look like it, if I'm honest with you. Really doesn't look like it. I like, still wait to see the outcome of this... Um, this situation with Dillian White and the WBC, but right now it seems like we're more likely, especially hearing what AJ had to say to Kugan Cassius, I think it seems like we're more likely to see Fury versus Usyk than anything else, but we'll see. All right, guys, that's it. Just a quick video with regards to Amir Khan's situation. Thanks as always for tuning in. Peace.